I'm Frank Seppi with NPC News Online, and I'm here with four-time Mr. Olympia, the gift, Phil Heath. Thank you for taking time for NPC. Of course, yeah. We're here in uh, New York City for the Atlantic States, and uh, Phil's gracious enough to answer a couple of questions, you know, for, for your NPC uh, fans out there. First thing, how's the Olympia prep going? Well, we just got that started uh, this week, so we're officially 15 weeks out. Who is that? Who is that unprofessional person? That ain't me. So anyway. Wait. Who is that unprofessional? You know you guys aren't supposed to do. Uh, oh, well, that's the boss. That's Steve so, Weinberg. Yeah. <laughs> so we're at his show tonight. And, uh, you know, I just started my Olympia preparations this weekend. Um, this will be my last on stage appearance until the, the Olympia contest. So the next 15 weeks, you know, I'll be very, very focused, obviously. Um, you know, not as much travel, obviously, with Gifted Nutrition. Right. Uh, you know, we caught a lot of new stuff happening with the company, but uh, unlike last year, we've done the work, you know, in the off season, all the crazy travel schedules, so now I can uh, solely focus on winning number five. The buzz now is Big Rami. He just won the Brazil Arnold, and people are talking about him. Do you feel he's a threat? I think, I, I think what people have to recognize is the fact that Rami is amazing. He, he's done an incredible job in such a short period of time. And I remember even myself was able to do similar things, you know, within my first couple of years as a pro. And it took me quite a long time to actually, you know, win the Olympia. Sure. And it's not as easy as what a lot of fans think. But fans are the ones that usually think um, in the now. And they forget that it takes a lot of time, you know, to become that champion. So I hate to... Uh, take away from his shine at the moment i mean he he should be allowed to embrace the fact that he won such a good title mm -hmm. um but for me i have to recognize the fact that i'm going against everyone everyone in the world is going to be competing against me right. um and i have to knock down a lot of great athletes um but i consider everyone as a threat that decides to put their name in that has earned the right to be a, at the olympic contest so you know Bring them on, I'm ready. <laughs> it all comes down to, obviously, when you're standing next to you, too, of and course. not just other shows. Now, this is, what, the fifth year in a row that Kai Green and you guys are going head-to-head. -head. You're 4-0. Yeah. You're and oh. You know, yeah. this is the fifth. Is there anything in, that he can do to beat you this year? Do you think there's anything he can do? If you come at your best, he comes at his best, could he beat you? No. <laughs> it's a Don't hesitate. No, because... <laughs> I think even his own fans know that yeah. at this point. I, I think a lot of new fans that come into the sport, they, they watch the movie Generation Iron, mm -hmm. they'll wa read different blogs or whatever and they draw their own opinions, but they fail to realize that this is a gentleman who um, has competed at a very, for a very long time. He's competed for well over 20 years. And a lot of people don't realize that at some point in time, you're now trying to chase your best. And nothing to take away from his work ethic because I, I understand that he trains very, very hard. Sure. But at the same time, you got people, I think, fail to realize that I've beaten all their favorite guys at their prime. And I'm just now approaching mine at the age of 35. So as long as I do my job, I put myself in a great position to win. And even with last year, you know, I considered myself last year at 80, 85 percent. So if I can be at my best, like you said, yeah. I don't even think any of us know what I'll look like each year. Mm -hmm. So unlike the others, from top to bottom, as far as like, you know, even guys like Desha Jackson, we all have an idea as to who is going to look like what because of them, you sure. know, reaching that peak and kind of trying to stay there. But, you know, I just have to do my job ultimately. So, you, you know, fans are always talking, this guy's going to beat this guy, this guy's going to beat this, this guy. Let's say everybody does come in their top shape. You got Sean Roden, mm -hmm. you got Big Rami, you got Kai, you got yourself. Mm -hmm. Genetically, you know how everybody is. Of course. How do you see that going top five? Dexter? I actually think Dexter puts himself in a great position this year after winning not just the Arnold Columbus, yeah. but missing his flight because of his visa issue and then basically taking, what, 19 hours? Sure, yeah. Coming off a flight and uh, beating everyone at the Arnold Australia. I mean, if anyone has a chance, it's him. And I think that his name hasn't even been chatted about because they're so wrapped around a new guy. And I think um, all of them have a chance. I can't really think of who's going to be second, third, fourth, or fifth at this point because until we stand there, I, I just don't know. I'll be honest, guys. Like, I'm going to look right into you. I mean, I appreciate you guys watching this, but I'm going to be very honest with you. I cannot care about who's going to be second, third, and fourth, and fifth. I have to be focused on what I have to do in order to be at my best. And um, the best man will win that night, 
Um, both nights are going to count. Mm -hmm. I'm training for that. And I think my sense of urgency this year is far greater than any other year because I kind of have an understanding of, in sports, five titles create a dynasty. Um, that alone will kind of slap the living out of people right. and understand that if you've considered me not winning before 2010, 2011, now you're going to watch me win my fifth and then you'll have even more to say that next year. So it's the same thing over and over again. We've heard about Big Ramy for the past three years. Mm -hmm. We've seen him improve. We've heard the same thing about Kai. Kai hasn't scored a point on me since 2010 Arnold. Um, but the people fail to realize that. And it's just because they're smoking this drug called hopium. <laughs> There's a drug that you guys smoke called hopium. And the fact that I'm looking at you right now lets you know that I'm not playing around. I'm going to be training my ass off. I'm going to be doing everything I'm supposed to do. And I'm going to enjoy whooping everyone's ass this year. And I'm not talking trash. It's just stating the fact. So now, today, you have no injuries. You're injury free. I'm beautiful so, right now. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, and when I say beautiful, it's the fact that in order to win four in a row, mm -hmm. um, it takes a lot of effort to be able to do that. And, you know, even my best friend, Jay, didn't do four in a row. Right. And so therefore, it's very, very difficult going against all these guys who I respect. But I have to be real with myself. Am I having fun? And I think this year I had to remind myself last year, I was like, Phil, you didn't really have a lot of fun because you put too much stress on yourself, you know, coming out with a new company, doing this and that and the other. Can you have some fun in that gym? Can you have some fun with the fans when you go meet them and stuff like that? And I thought, you know what, when I first got into this sport, I mean, I remember being interviewed like you and I was like, oh my God, this is great. Everything's great, great, great. And then it becoming the business and, sure. and the grind of the travel and this and that, it wears you down. I was able to just center myself around some good people and recognize the fact that in order for me to get more titles and be the best, I have to love what I do. So I have the best, supposedly everybody feels like Phil Heath has the greatest lifestyle known the man. It's because it was earned, not given. And it's, and it's because of that that I'm going to try to improve every, every day, every week, every month, every year, so that I can look back and say I had no regrets because I'm going to retire at, at, um, in the year 2020. I promise myself that means that there's four, five more shows left. Sure. I have to take every workout with a greater sense of urgency and have fun. Do you think it, because you're so successful in this sport and in other businesses, do you think it rubs people the wrong way if you put up a post like, you know, I have this car or I have that? Do you think that's why fans, sometimes they gravitate more towards Kai because he's more of the underdog and they can't relate? In that sense, like kind you put up a $500 pair of sneakers and somebody's like, oh, that's Phil showing off or this or that. Do you feel like, you know, that maybe that's why a lot of people look at, at Kai and they're like, oh, well, you know, I want him to win. Or is it just because you've been on the top for such a long time that they want somebody new, you know, to win? It can be whatever they want it to be, I guess. I mean, when you're a kid, your parents want the best from you. Sure. Your, your parents would say oh, my kid wants to be a doctor, a lawyer, you know, police officer, whatever it is. A lot of parents push their kids to be successful. I'm just showing you that I can do it and I can have fun. If someone's going to freak out over a pair of sneakers, then that means that they have way too much time on their hands and they should go find some, some success themselves. <laughs> um, it, it's really honest. I mean, yeah. uh, th they should really concern themselves about how they can better themselves instead of worrying about someone else that's doing it big. If that's the case, they should get mad at their boss at, at their work, who is a CEO, is a president, that has a nice suit that probably, for what they know, may cost $500 or $5,000. Um, they should get mad at the guy at the nightclub that actually opens up a bottle of wine or a bottle of champagne. They should be mad at him too, right? So if I want to post something, that's because I work for it. Maybe it's because I want to prove to people that they can do it too. Have they not thought about that? Maybe I'm trying to inspire you guys into realizing that it's achievable. When a lot of you guys want to compete, whether it be men's physique or men's bodybuilding, a lot of your friends and family are going to say, can you make money in that? And that's the first thing they say. So I'm showing you that you can make money in this. And look, like, wow, can he, can he buy a nice house for his mom? Can he buy a nice car and this and that? I've showed you that you can do this. So I'm trying to inspire you, not like brag. Like if it was bragging, I'd be like, hey, man, look at my shoes. Look at this. Look at, ugh, I'm not doing that. I'm reminding you subliminally that it is possible, just like I'm trying to tell you with my physique, it is possible to improve. People don't realize how difficult it is, obviously, to run a business. They just see the glitz and the glamour of it. How are you going to find the time to train for the Olympia, the top cha championship in the world, when you have such, you have gifted on a day-to-day -day basis? And I know you're involved in every aspect yeah. of the company. Yeah. So how do you find time and how do you, 
mentally stay focused. I think after last year's um, Olympia, I was able to learn from some mistakes that we made as a company, as a group, and me individually, both um, in the office and on stage in the gym. Uh, now I'm, I'm, what I did in my off season was this. I recognized the fact that the first seven months of 2015, I was gonna have to really bust my ass and, and get all those deals done. So then um, my team will be able to uh, carry the baton for the remainder of the race, of that particular race. So now I get to run my show and, and focus on my craft. So it's all about surrounding yourselves with positive people that are all obviously um, with a certain skill set. Um, sometimes, you know, we had to trim some fat, you know, literally within the office. Yep. And, and that's something that, thank God, I actually went to a great business school and understanding that those processes and creating that environment so then they can succeed and they're going to be busting their ass because they know that, okay, Phil helped us get to this point. Let's take it from here so he can focus on winning number five. So our company understands that without Phil doing his thing, we have a greater battle, greater climb. Mm -hmm. So let's let's work together and, and they're up all hours of the night. If I'm up, you know, at five AM, they're or they probably haven't even gone to sleep, some of these guys working on social media marketing, working with different distributors internationally, making sure that our domestic and international lines, you know, working with bodybuilding.com, like doing all these different oh, yeah, things yeah. to make sure that when I win number five, they're already ready to market and do their job. So it's it's a it's a beautiful thing because I get to realize that not even Arnold Schwarzenegger, Lee Haney, Ronnie Coleman, no even, even Jay, no one has no one. done it while yep. they've been champion. And it lets you guys know that it can be possible for you to go to school, to get a degree, use that degree within bodybuilding. So when I walk down the street, no one's gonna say that, oh, this guy's dumb as a box of rocks. It's like, how so when I was on Bloomberg? I was there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now one of your best moves, I think, uh, for the business was getting Janet Leoug, who you predicted oh, that is going to win the Olympia. Absolutely. Janet has been a super bright star in our company. I mean, who doesn't love this woman? I mean, she's so cool. She's like so humbled. And she just is, she's one of the girls that's just happy to be there. But yet on stage, she makes every girl on that stage nervous. And I love that competitive spirit that she exudes on the stage. After watching her win in Australia, um, she was so nervous and she, she beat Miss Olympia. She beat her. And I don't think anyone really had any, you know, qualms about her winning. I think people really Legitimately felt won. like everybody has to bring their aid game with her. And, it, and it's just a pleasure to have her on board. She's very excited. We are expecting her to win. I told her straight up, I said, I want to share the stage with you after I win, mm -hmm. you know, with the titles in hand. No company is going to be able to do that. No one's going to be able to help push her because if anything, I want her to win just as much as me. And, and it's just because of the fact that her friends, her family, they, they love her. We love her. We just want her to stay confident, train hard, train smart, of course, have fun. So into the camera, your prediction for the uh, Bikini Olympia? <laughs> oh, Janet all day. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> Sorry. She's great. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so take it back to the Olympia. How many weeks out are you right now? Fifteen. Fifteen weeks out. And are you ahead of the game right now than you were previously or just Yeah, so so yesterday over at Bed Francis, I went over there to go train some delts and uh, I weighed in at 270 pounds, um, which was about 15 pounds up from last year at this particular wow. time. I don't know how I'm doing it. I just realized that maybe it's because I have less stress in my life, being able to um, use better time management, not having the stress of a brand new company, stuff like that. Um, I do think that all of that plays a role in, in conjunction with the muscle maturity. That's something that no one has really chatted about for me since I started bodybuilding, but that's what's happening now. So I'm just being uh, more open about my um, purpose-driven lifestyle and, and having more method to my madness. So I'm, I'm excited about it because I think uh, about 10 weeks out, I'll probably be about 280 and that's going to be crazy because I've never been that heavy. And, and look, I mean, I'm not fat, so it's like right. it's not going to go that way. And I understand everybody else's mentality is probably like, oh, well, this guy weighs 280 pounds or 300 pounds. Yeah. It, for me, it's like, guys, it, it really hasn't yielded the result that you would hope that they. And that's why I keep saying the hopium is very, very apparent. So I have to re realize that you st have this starting point. Be smart. Don't get injured doing something stupid, right. you know and uh, just enjoy the process. In your opinion, out of the four Olympias that you did do, what was the best package 
what year did you feel like you came in 2013 the all day 2013 all day i think that was the one that i gave them the uppercut from hell i think that one i i think the judges even were shocked and that's why they had me come out one time and then they brought me out a second time and they're like no phil go back and that was a real i i was freaked out because yeah. i've never seen that and it, and for it to happen, I mean, here I'm stuttering because I'm like, that was crazy. We were backstage for that show, and I remember when you first went on, actually J.M. Mannion came up to us, he said, I got shivers. He said, because that was the he, the condition and the shape you were in. It was like you came out, it was lights yeah. out. Yeah. Last year, yeah. it was kind of... It was not the same. You I still could, won, yeah. legitimately, but it oh, was... It was not the same. I mean, I'm, I'm a man. I can say, look, yeah. guys, like a, if 100% was 2013, it was 80% last year. Uh, I'll give you some math. Um, I'm honest about my stage weight. Mm -hmm. 248 pounds is what I weighed at the 2013 Mr. Olympia. 248. 248. 241 pounds is what I weighed last year. But yet, I still look bigger, but not better. So, mm. you know, I was obviously off. So I was able to correct those things. Um, that's the great thing about having a nutritionist, you know, on staff with Honey Rambot. You know, he and I were sure. able to fix things from Friday to Saturday, and then assess the off season correctly and um now we're probably going to have an even better time because we realize wow like even at your worst like you have the opportunity to still win some guys they place 100 percent, they can't even come close so it doesn't mean that i rest it means that i'm never going to let that shit happen again and i'm just going to have fun with this and make sure that my due diligence is well done how would you address the comments that arnold schwarzenegger made at the oh. the arnold about the you know bodybuilders having big waists and so on i think what the new um, fan did was attach themselves to that comment way more than the people that have been in it a long time. This is nothing new. He said something that our president, you know, I mean, come on, like, Jim Mangan used to talk about this all, the, the whole 10 years I've been pro, we've been talking about this issue. The one thing I have to address to Arnold and everybody else, who won the show? <laughs> Dexter right. Jackson won the show, so, Dexter Jackson was the epitome of aesthetics and all these other things, but yet, if you don't like how someone looks, don't invite them to your show. And oh it's just the way it is. So next year, maybe it's smart that if I were doing it, I would say six weeks out, three weeks out, you're going to send your invitation again, and you're going to send some photos that is going to go to some people, mm -hmm. that is going to be a close-knit group, selected group that he selects, that says, this, if this guy has distension already, I don't want him at my show because that's my product. And I don't blame him for being upset, but you're inviting him to your party. I'm not gonna invite them to my party. It's not like the Olympia. I mean, you had to earn your way and if they mess up their prep, that's on them. But you're, this is an invitational, so I advise those people who'd run the show to, to remind these athletes, like, hey, you're not looking right. You know, it's like, who, who won the last four Olympias? Right. And, you know, in your structure, you're not somebody who's known for having well, a big weight. apply to me, how, so. No, I know. Yeah, and, yeah, how many, yeah. and who's won the Arnold the most times? Right, Dexter. Dexter. So and, that's And the, he's that was, known as one of the I, smallest weights in the I'm not, I mean, I'm not here to, like, throw shade on. No, uh, on, true. But I think at the same time, you guys, like, you guys have to understand, like, when, when, when someone of that magnitude, Arnold Schwarzenegger has done a great job for our industry, bar none, but what you guys have to understand what he means is he doesn't want the other guys that are placing lower do that again because that is his product, right? Um, so he's trying to protect the brand, of course. But if you were to say Mr. Olympia or Arnold Classic Champion came in this, that, and the other, then it's a problem. But, I mean, come on, like all of the judges, I think, got it right at the Arnold Classic. I think they, you know, they get it right at the Olympia as well. They're doing their job. They're marking down the guys who came in. We're, I'm not even going to throw names out there. Y'all know, like the guys that came in with the distension did not place well. So all that stuff does not really apply. So you guys got to stop with this whole like who's aesthetic, who's not, because the guys who are winning already have it. It's the guys that don't get on their ass on their social and say, hey, man, you play seventh, eighth, ninth. I want you to be in top three. Get your get your gut right. Get this right. But I mean, come on, you talking about the top three guys in the world saying us to get it right. We're already top three. Yeah. Talk to these guys. They're the majority, actually. They're the guys trying to come up. Tell these young cats that are trying to get up there. The same young cats that they were talking about how they're going to do something had distension, too. So it's, it's not the top guys. It's the young dudes. It's the, 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 some seasoned veterans as well that should know better. Don't bring that package. But ultimately, it's an invitational show. 
don't bring their ass to your party if you don't want them looking like that. And that's coming from Mr. Olympia, because I don't want to see a bad product either, because it obviously affects us all. Will you ever compete at the Arnold? <laughs> if you're invited. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I haven't been invited. I haven't been invited. You guys, if you want me to do it, if you guys want me to do it, seriously, there's a couple things that have to take place, but, and they're going to say, oh, it's the More money. prize money. <laughs> I'm going to ask you guys a simple question. Would you do the same 40-hour job or a 50-hour job for less money? So you have to think, like when I get ready for the Mr. Olympia contest, it's taken me 15 weeks to do Olympia. I'm gonna win that prize money, right? Within, within six weeks, I have to do tours, tours, tours. No time for nothing. Then in December, I have to get right back on it and go do it for half the money. Mm. I don't know if you would work 40 hours a week for half the wage. So if, in order for someone to make sense for that to me, to take time away also from my company, right. they would really have to uh, throw me a bone here. So I would love to do it. I did it in 2013 because I wanted to beat those same guys that won't do the Columbus show because Kai hasn't done it. And I did the Spain show to beat him again, mm -hmm. you know, and all those guys. Roden didn't do it this year. So I beat those guys at an Arnold Classic. So, I mean, Rami hasn't even done the Columbus. Mm. So a lot of guys still have to do it. And I'm not trying to deflect. Sure. I will do the Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic if there are certain conditions that would be met. I'm not bigger than the industry by no means, but I have to make it worthwhile for myself as well. It's your opinion, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh yeah, because I mean, if I don't come in right, you know, um, they're gonna say, well, Gunther beat um, Ronnie Coleman at the Europa show. If I don't come in even better than the Olympia without any rest and don't look the same, you guys are gonna say that I was off and I shouldn't have deserved it. So yet I, I was still better than them. So it's kind of like, it, it, it you got more to lose more than to win. lose than gain. Yeah. So they have to make it to where I gain something. And I don't really expect people to understand that mentality because they're not walking this life. But I'm trying to illustrate it to you um, as well as I can to give you perspective as to why it makes uh, sense on paper. Now, are you going to have any of your workouts or messages to the fans on your Instagram or where can they see your day-to-day -day stuff? Yeah, so obviously, you know, they can go on my website, philipheath.com, and then from there you can also select any of the social media icons on the upper right-hand corner. That will give you the verified account. I don't, I, first of all, I want to make sure you go to the right place. Second, I'm also coming out with a mobile app that will um, all, also have uh, video content that I've never shown. Um, I normally never show you guys anything. And um, I'm expecting you guys to kind of, you know, hit us up, not just Gifted Nutrition, but also me online and let me know, hey, we want to see this app. We want to see what's going on. It's all about engagement at this point. If you guys don't say anything, I will not do anything. I'll just sit back and relax. If you guys are like, hey, Phil, we want to see what you're eating today. We want to see you training. We want to see you driving to the gym. We want to see all these cool things. When I post it, like for instance, today, uh, yesterday I posted a video on Instagram, 15 seconds. I've got 780,000 followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Only less than 20,000 people like it within a day. Why? That's, that means that it's going to all those people and they're unique visitors because I know that it's not a fake account. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. Rare. I have real followers and yet all they're doing is viewing it and they're not hitting the like button. How am I supposed to know if you like it or not? Why would I do more? Like, so if you do more, I promise I will do more. Well, we discussed this at the Pittsburgh Pro that you kind of don't want to release any pictures right. before the Olympia because it takes away from kind of that aura and mystique of what kind of shape and condition you're on, even though people use all the filters and Photoshop. Oh, absolutely. But, you know. Absolutely. I think we've seen that a lot in this industry. I mean, we got guys that look like King Kong, Coleman, and then look like um, a, guy that, big difference, a yeah. guy that couldn't win the Backyard Barbecue Classic. So um, I, I think for me, I'm going to give out certain types of content. Will it be with my shirt off and this and that? Probably not. But it's still going to talk about different training techniques and, and me eating and me, you know, my perspective and my thought process. I'm trying to open up and give you guys a little bit more of me as long as you guys are willing to participate. If they're not, it's a trial and error. Like if it doesn't, it's never going to take away from um, the mystique factor for sure. It's just going to get them. A, I'm going to be teasing you guys. Basically, that was, that's what I'm trying to say. We always get emails through NPC News Online about 
what does this top pro do to get in shape? What does this top pro to do to eat? What does he eat? What is, how does he train? Would you ever think about coming out with an ebook? Oh, we've already done it. So we've already done it. We're just in the um, uh, marketing stages right now. Okay. Uh, you know, obviously you can come out with all this content, but if you don't want to market it well, it's not going to have any push. Yeah. And it's going to sit there and people are going to be like, oh yeah, you know, this was cool. We needed to have a bigger punch. So Gifted Nutrition, we've already done one um, for myself and some of our other athletes as well. So we'll have that available soon. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, I always appreciate you taking yeah, the time yeah, and being 100% yeah. honest. Yeah. You know, with everyone. You guys love you it, right? If you guys love it, I'll come back. These guys, you know, they, you know, I've been knowing Frank for a long time. Um, that's why he gets the 100 real talk from me. Get the, the um, real scoop. But uh, be sure to go on NBC News Online for all your information pertaining to all the amateur contests nationwide. And be sure to go on philippeath.com, also giftednutrition.com for more details as where I'm going to be on tour throughout the remaining of the year in addition to updates of where I'm training, what I'm eating, what I'm drinking, what I'm doing, who I, who I want to kill, you know, like everything, you know. And, and lastly, um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for your ongoing support. Be sure, and I'm going to say this real fast, be sure before you start any of these training programs, I know a lot of you guys are getting ready for summer, be sure to get your blood work checked. Actually go out and get a real physical done. There's a lot of places in your uh, areas, in your cities that do it for free. You just have to go out there and know what you're up against. That's my whole purpose behind this message. Know what you're up against, guys. If you have an ache and pain in this net and you have insurance, get an MRI done. Know what you're up against so we train hard, we train smarter, and we have fun and we look gifted. All right? Thank you. All right, Frank Seppi and four-time Mr. Olympia, Phil Heath for NPC News Online. Thank you, Phil. Yep.